I love these little books. Let me tell you, I love these. Getting some stuff off my table here. So I got room. I love these little books. I bet you're going to like these too. When I saw these in, um, I found them, I think it was just in a craft store. This is from the Happy Planner. And they were called journaling stickers. So I had to look at them and see what they were all about. And these are the cutest things. They're like little booklets. Okay. Some of them open one way. Some of them open the other way. But look, dot grid. Can you see that? That's dot grid. Yeah. How much fun is that? And there were all different kinds of them. So... There's some more. These, I believe, all came in one set. Let's see. Black and white. Um, I think these were all in one set. I'm not exactly sure. I'm looking for how many pieces are on here. 26 pieces. I think these all came together. This is another one, a big, long one. Okay. Kind people are my kind of people. That is the truth. Okay, so those are all the same kinds of things. They're little journaling stickers. And I thought, okay, well, what can we do with that? And again, I have all these scraps of all of these leftover papers, right? Or little bits and pieces of things. These are all painted, painted papers, or these are paste papers, which is also a class on at howtogetcreative.com. Not only is that a class... On the website but that's also a two-part class that we have here on YouTube as a sample class so you can look that up paste papers are fabulous and paste paper pizzazz I think are the names of them so you can look those up here on YouTube and that way you can get a feel for what the classes are like um, over at howtogetcreative.com so I took the size that I like the most from those little um, pre-made journaling stickers so this was the size of this and then I just cut them out cut out rectangles and then I just put a corner used a corner punch to punch them put one of the little stickers one of those little happy planner stickers this was actually from the planner set because it was the right size now anytime you're going to stick a sticker onto something like paste paper be sure you add some glue behind it because the adhesive on the stickers will not hold then what i did i happen to have this i, I mean it seems so silly to buy a stamp that has this just lines uh and this is another old stampin up stamp i don't know if they still have this one or not i have no idea but i know i've seen other journal other uh, stamps that have this sort of thing it's just lines that's all it is and i bought that i bought that at a garage sale for a dollar okay so i bought it for a dollar and then i just stamped inside each of these little booklets okay now this what you're seeing coming through which i even like is just the paint from the other side then I took score tape, so this is paperback tape, and I put it on the backs. So they're all ready to use. So all you got to do is peel off the paper backing and stick them in your journal, stick them on a card, you know, whatever you want to do. So I'll show you the rest of these so you can see. So this was a different corner treatment. And I put this, the little stickers, the little embellishment stickers in different places. Now, you could, of course, stamp a word on them or a phrase or, you know, anything that would fit on those. But, I mean, how quickly you can make stuff like this. All of these are from two sheets, two sheets of paste paper because I often put lots of colors on one sheet of paste paper at a time. And so there were lots of lots of colorful options and then I made some that were a little bigger so this one is a little bigger than that one so we have the mama bear the papa bear and the baby bear I know aren't they cute I love how this show turned out with that design and having the multiple colors on them I love that so those are all ready to use all you got to do is um, 
stick them on whatever it is you want to stick them on and each and every one of them has the lines already in them now you could do this with a, a ruler and a pen or whatever but it's ever so much simpler and easier if you have a stamp and it's more fun and maybe you have a stamp like that and you've been wondering what to do with it yeah these are too cute for words too cute i'm telling you too cute Okay, what else do I want to show you? Words and quotes. All right, I don't know whether you like words as much as I do. Somebody who fills journals with words likes words. And so I'm going to show you some some different ways to, to co not necessarily to collect, but just some ideas for using words and quotes. And collecting them is... It, is a term loosely used. I, I don't collect them in an organized fashion. I collect them in a haphazard fashion. <laughs> and then I have them to use for whatever strikes my fancy. So I like to look in different things like little book, you know, I bought these on sale someplace. So we'll start here. Okay, I bought these on sale somewhere. These are Mary Inglebright illustrations and quotes i happen to really like mary inglebright she was um i don't know if she still resides in the state where i live but she was um, from in the, the state where i live uh, but i love the quotes i love the images and so i keep these for reference just because they inspire me and they often give me a um, Give me just a little teeny quote that I can use someplace. So I, here's one for Christmas. This was another one. I don't know if somebody gave this to me. I don't remember, but it's called Dear Friend. And one of the reasons that I keep some of these around is because I really enjoy looking at the way that the word is presented in an artistic fashion because that gives me ideas for using things in my art journal or my writing journal because I have gotten into doing more word art sorts of things in even in my writing journal so those it's always good to have little inspiration things and besides that they're really darn stinking cute because they're little yeah pretty darn cute some other things you can do if you have stamps and um, old you know, leftover bits of text paper, um, uh, deli paper. This this is um, dictionary type paper, and these words were sets. These came out of different sets of Donna Downey stamps, and I took them all. There was like one with each set, or maybe two with each set. And so I pulled all of these out and stamped them out so I could tell what they are. And I keep all of these stamps like this. So you could have certainly big, you know, any kind of, of sizable word uh, like that. And these are just stamped on dictionary paper. And I've stamped them so that the dictionary or text paper is upside down or sideways so that it's not as distracting i'm not trying to read the print that's behind it uh, these are same words and and i just you know kind of roughly cut them out and then i'll add the dots for the eyes when i put them in whatever i'm putting them in these are bits and pieces of deli paper left over from jelly plate printing sessions and you know some I like some of them that just have the tiniest little bit of color on them so I have all of these ready to go and when these are put into a journal with glue stick uh, they just you know they just sort of I don't know they just have a really neat look about them because they're translucent so that is one of the ways that I enjoy working with words I'll stamp a bunch of them and keep them on hand another thing I like to do is to just go through calendars and um, these are all calendars and this happened to be a calendar that was all full of uh, Steve Jobs quotes 
And so I just went through and I cut the words out that I liked the most. I tend to try to fill my journals and and whatever I'm doing with things that to me are positive. There's enough negative garbage out in the world that I don't need to put that in my journals. In fact, if I write, you know, garbagey kind of stuff, I gesso over it with black gesso and then draw a mandala over it or put something positive on top of it. Or I cut those pages out and get rid of them. I don't want any of the negative stuff left in my in my space. It doesn't mean I'm not negative sometimes because I certainly am. But yeah. Here's another one. This came from a calendar. So I took it out of the calendar. I also like to collect quotes. And so these are all different quotes that I collected. And I wrote them all in uh, a Word document and then printed them out in a, an interesting font. This font is called 1492 Report, I believe. So these are all just all different quotes. And so I print them out on kind of a small scale and um, then they're all ready to go. And sometimes I'll cut these, cut the words all apart and put them in, you know, one word at a time. I don't necessarily keep them in a strip like that. I find interesting quotes in magazines, so I'm always ripping those out. This was from my uh, a piece that I copied out of my mother's autograph book written to her from her mother from 1940. So I saved it because it's my grandmother's handwriting and um, I'll use that someplace. And same thing, this is done in a different font and then the paper, instead of leaving it white, I just sprayed it with a bunch of, of spray. And I tend to do things that are, I tend to work with more permanent products. So this is probably SEI tumble dye, which will um, not be reactivated when I glue it into a journal or wherever I use tend to use it. So more interesting fonts. I'll often print them in different sizes because who knows what size I might want to use and maybe I'll just want the word sing or listening that kind of thing and uh, but I'll print it first and then spray it with uh, color afterwards because I do that I print that on a a laser printer. More words and quotes just cut apart and kept for whatever I want to use it for. This is, these are the similar quotes done on, this is printer fabric. And so I printed the quotes on printer fabric and did whatever they said you had to do to make it permanent. Iron, some of them you iron them, some of them you get wet and dry them, just depends. And then this is, I think this is just paint that I uh, scraped over the top of these. And then, so that is a different texture. So this has kind of, I'm gonna zoom in really close so you can see the texture of this. You see the weave of the fabric. So that's actually fabric. Yeah, so that's actually fabric. Cool, huh? So that's all ready to use. So you see what I mean by collecting things and having stuff ready to go? It's a lot of fun to do that. This, These actually were sent to me by um, someone else who owned all of these stamps. And she stamped all of these quotes off on uh, nice paper. So she stamped all of these off and sent them to me. So they're all ready to use. And... Um, which is really nice because I don't have, I, I don't know that I had any of these stamps, but wasn't that fun? So nice, so nice. Uh, of course, you can buy stickers with words on them. I particularly, I only buy things that I find interesting to me. I like these chalkboard types of stickers. Now, these have some thickness to them. These are on a uh, cardstock. So these have some thickness. They're not chipboard, but they are cardstock. And uh, so, you, you know, you kind of have to pick and choose where you put them. Another thing that I like about stuff like this is I love to, to learn and mimic the word art, the way the letters are drawn. So I have several of these. And I just, I keep them for that purpose also, for different ways of 
doing uh, word art as well as using the stickers so you can buy your own these were little things I found one day in in a um, I think these were at a craft store and these just came in this little pack and the whole purpose of this was to put these little bits in your kids lunchbox and I don't have little kids anymore and so I don't have those you know that I need to have those for but they sure are a lot of fun for inspiring or putting in a journal and if they're too heavy if they're too thick like some of these are well and they also have quotes on both sides so sometimes you can get these and peel them apart now it depends on the quality of the cardstock they used and sometimes they'll peel apart really well and sometimes they don't so you just kind of pick at the corner and because I have no fingernails it's sometimes a challenge to get them started but you can see you can just pick them start pulling them apart and like this one you know this one it didn't peel off accurately it um, ripped this one has been peeled and so it peeled just fine so you never know how stuff like that's going to work but if you have a double-sided something and it's a thick paper or cardstock you can usually split it and then you get double double the stuff i hope you're still hanging with me and thank you for for uh being here because i just had a lot of stuff i wanted to share with you real quickly i'm going to share some books for inspiration for word art I'm going to actually show you some of my own stuff in my own journals here in a minute. So here's some of the books that I have that are really inspirational for letter styles and lettering. It's not calligraphy. It's just what I would consider word art. So The Art of Whimsical Lettering. These are Joanne Sharp's books. And this is another one, Artful Alphabets. And then I've got a couple of Jenny Doe's books, uh, Creative Lettering. These are a lot of fun. These are from all, a lot of different artists. So lots of fun ways to learn about lettering. And this one's more creative lettering. So more artists, more ideas, more fun ways to learn about lettering. And this one, the Creative Lettering Workshop. This is by Leslie Riley. And this is, this is using, it's kind of like illustrating a quote in an artistic form is more of what this and a lot of step-by-step -step things this is they're all great books i think 